What is going on everybody? It is Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today on the 14th of June in 2019 in terms of my trades, as well as going over some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching here and looking to trade in these next couple of days, in these next couple of trading days in the middle of June. So before we do get into the topics of today's video, all I ask from you guys out there, the supporters, the viewers, the subscribers, is if you enjoy the content, go down below, hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you do enjoy the content here and you haven't yet subscribed in a couple of minutes, consider subscribing. I'm uploading videos every single day about the stock market, personal finance, investing, and I guarantee you guys will find a ton of value on this channel channel. So let's just get right into it, guys. The markets today, they were kind of dipping red. And you guys can see I am recording uh, this video with about an hour left in the market. This is what is called power hour from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. on the East Coast. Obviously, if you're on the West Coast, it's just the last hour of the market. So we're going to see some interesting uh, movements here in the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and a bunch of other individual stocks. And now, like I said, guys, the markets have dipped their toes in the bit of red today. Again, the NASDAQ was actually down, I think, like 0.6% at one point. You guys can see it's down about 0.4%. 1% right now, down about $31. The S&P 500 right now is down about $2.50, down about 0.09%. And if we're going to the one day, one minute, you guys can see we did dip about $10 below from where we are right now. So at the lowest point of the day today, as of right now, unless anything crazy happens in the next 53 minutes, the S&P was down about 12, 13 points at its lowest point today. So it's seeing a strong rally. I'm interested in seeing, are we going to close green? But nonetheless, it's simply in my eyes, you know, not a crazy red day, obviously not a crazy green day. It's simply another consolidation here, uh, consolidation day here for the S&P 500. The Dow Jones, again, you guys can see it's very similar to the S&P. It's up about 0.03%, very minimal uh, you know, move here to the upside or the downside. It's pretty much staying you know, where it was yesterday, roughly, putting us, in my opinion, at another day of consolidation here as of right now with about 52 minutes left in the market on Friday uh, for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is the only one that's seeing a sizable move here um, to the downside because we do see some pressure on some tech stocks today. We do see Apple's down about a dollar here. It was down all the way to about $190 this morning. We got about a $4.30 gap down um, from the close yesterday to the point where we opened um, today. So that drug the NASDAQ down. That dragged the NASDAQ down pretty aggressively. Uh, Google here, it's down about 0.17%, but just like um, the NASDAQ or Apple rather, this one also gapped down a little bit this morning. And Netflix, you guys can see, is down about 1.1%. So overall, NASDAQ is getting hit harder than the main, uh, or out of the three, NASDAQ is getting hit the hardest out of the three uh, indexes that I track on this channel. So going over back to the S&P, let's break down some technicals very quickly. It's kind of similar to the technicals that I broke down in yesterday's video because when days like this, this occur where the markets are pretty flat. Technicals kind of remain the same day over day until we do end up picking a direction. And you guys can see we have clearly haven't, we clearly haven't picked a direction yet in the S&P 500. We haven't popped up. We haven't sold off uh, quite yet. But the NASDAQ, on the other hand, you guys can see, you know, it is selling off a bit. It is forming a bit of a descending pattern here, lower highs. And it's in the process, if it gets rejected here and start to push down, you know, that would be in the process of making a lower low again. But hopping back over here to the S&P, you know, we're pretty much simply trading right now on top of the support at 2885, the support from a resistance level back in uh, 
the beginning of April, you guys can see that level was a resistance. We made it as a new support right now. Um, actually, in my, no, no, no. That level was a support back in the beginning of April. Now we're there again, clearly. And this is a very critical point. Like I said in yesterday's video, if we break into the 2870s, 2860s, 2850s for the S&P, that's going to be the confirming factor in my eyes of the continuation of this sell-off. That's what we need to see here for the S&P to pick the downwards direction. And on the flip side, if we pop up and break above 29.15, that's going to be a very bullish move and we may be pushing up greener uh, if that does end up happening. So 20-day, one-hour chart. Let's go see some smaller time frames. You guys can see um, the consolidation a bit further here. You guys can also see we're holding that 50 SMA support. <clears throat> Excuse me. That is a pretty good sign right now. So if let's say we break that, you know, that's going to be another confirming point that we are going down on the S&P 500. Five day, five minute. Let's see what we're looking like on this time frame. Uh, five day, five minutes. Going to show you a bunch of the same, right? We're holding the 2880, 2885 level of support very nicely. We're holding moving averages as support levels here. That's looking pretty good right now. So overall, we just simply need to pick a direction for these indexes, especially the S&P. Going over here to the Dow on the smaller time frame charts, you guys can see a bunch of the same consolidation, specifically above that $26,000 level. We're simply trading in this 200-point zone right now from 26.2 up to about, or rather 26,000 flat, all the way up to about $26,200. And if we break this level, you know, 26,200, we start to truck up to the 26,500s, that's going to be a bullish confirmation on, on the Dow. Let's say we break these moving averages here on the five-day, five-minute. We start to break back into the $25,000 level. You know, that's going to be, in my eyes, a pretty confirming uh, factor to the downside for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Hopping out over here to the 184 hour, it's a lot of the same, guys, right? We're noticing the resistance at 26,200 or 200. That's where we need to break to get back up to the next resistance up at 26,500 ish dollars. And from there, we're going to continue to break resistances if that does end up happening all the way up, potentially to. To these all-time highs, but I don't really see us getting there just quite yet because, again, markets are overheated right now. There's a bunch of negative news that continues to come out. We got some weak retail sales da uh, data today. We got that weak jobs report a couple... Uh, was that last week or the week before where we got 75,000 jobs in May versus uh, 180,000 expected? Those are two key economic data points that they're really... You can't really ignore these. These are really, really important and impactful on um, the stock market. Even if it's not showing it quite yet, this can be one of the... Um factors, if enough factors start to accumulate, that can bring down the uh, market pretty quickly and pretty heavily. So going over here to the NASDAQ, you guys can see, like I said, you know, in yesterday's video, we were talking about this channel. It seems like we did end up breaking out of it, and now we're slowly starting to hold it as a support. It's going to be interesting. Are we going to break back down, you know, into this channel and maybe retest uh, $7,400 and that one 180 SMA support. That's going to be what I'm looking for on the uh, NASDAQ here on the 184 hour chart. You guys can notice an overall strong level of resistance is actually right where we are right now at about 7,500 to about 7,530. So that's a level if we break to the upside, we could be heading upwards of 60 or 7650 on the NASDAQ. But let's say we get rejected here, start to sell off. You know, this could be pushing downwards again to that 180 SMA support and the support of this channel. And from there, we may be testing the 50 SMA. We may be testing the next level of support at about 73.35 right now for the NASDAQ. Going over here to some smaller time frame charts, you guys can see that channel a bit closer here, especially on the 20-day. You guys can see we did break out of it, so this is another important spot. Actually, let me see if I can redraw this channel very quickly, guys. Let's see. So let me clear it. 
Oh my god, it's not letting me. So clear. Let's just clear the whole drawing set. There's so many lines here. Starting fresh sometimes is kind of nice, guys. It gets your thoughts going again on where the support levels are, resistances. You kind of get to draw out some new trend lines. It is kind of nice, in my opinion, uh, just refreshing sometimes the data, right? So you guys can see with that new channel I just drew here, um, we're kind of testing a resistance again at the top of this channel and mind you it's also again like I said the 7500 level of resistance on the Nasdaq as well which is very very important right now uh, for the direction to be picked on this particular index so that's kind of the market update for today's video guys I would love to know what your thoughts are on the market let me know down below are we setting up for a dump right now are we going to see something like this happen in the coming weeks like a dump like that, or are we setting up for a big bullish move where we break out and maybe test all-time highs again? I would love to know what you guys have to think. Let me know down below in the comment section. So today, I ended up playing JNUG, guys. JNUG, GC slash GC, the gold futures, they went on another tear up today. They went up all the way to 1362. This was at 1 a.m. this morning, I believe. And if I show you guys this five day, five minute, you guys can see very closely here. It was actually at 1 a.m. when Eastern Standard Time, when gold started the push from 1349 all the way up to about 1361. That was at about 3 a.m. when it peaked. Then we started to sell off aggressively, heading into the market open, and I was viewing this as a potential dip buy on JNUG, and I kind of got lucky here in the sense that I played it out perfectly, and if I held JNUG, I probably would have, uh, or if I still held, or if I was holding on to JNUG right now, I'd probably be red because I played it... Um, on this little uh, rebound here at around, what time was it? If I look at JNUG, I can show you guys. But it was this little rebound play, not after the first pump, but after the second uh, sell-off at about 925 up to about 942. This is when I was able to just get in and out of JNUG. It was about a 30-minute trade. Uh, I just got in and out before the big dump, which is why I'm saying I kind of timed it pretty uh, pretty well here today, guys, and I did get a bit lucky because if I, you know, steered my attention away for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, got sidetracked with something else while obviously still keeping up my uh, trade on the computer, you know, sometimes I do other stuff and then I get sidetracked, you know, if I came back and I saw it dump all the way down to here, you know, that would be very bad. So I did end up getting um, a bit lucky with this circumstance here, but you guys can see, um, going back to GC, you know, I just wanted to see if it was going to hold a higher low, and that's what I thought it was doing here. If it was holding a higher low, that means it was looking to potentially, you know, rebound there and continue this run up, and who knows, maybe get back to 1360. So that was my thought at this point, and I entered into JNUG on this little pullback here. You guys can see it on a closer basis. You know, we got a higher low from the previous. I was like, okay, this is a pretty good entry point in my personal opinion and from there we started to ride up closer to the 50 SMA and I was already out of JNUG at this point and we dumped so that is kind of um the the uh the what I did today my thoughts behind uh this trade again I got a bit uh lucky here with timing if I held it I probably would have lost a decent amount of money today but overall it wasn't the biggest trade I think I got in at like 928 ended up selling out at about 938 about like a 10 cent per per share gain here, giving me about a 1.1, 1.2% profit on a Friday. And typically on a Friday, guys, and this is really every day for me, you guys know that if you've been following me, I'm extra conservative on Fridays. I'm not looking to end off my week on a red note. I hate doing that. I hate losing money on a Friday. Um, I just like, if I get a win, I like keeping it consistent, right? I don't like over trading. And this is something that I do every day, but especially on a Friday, I'm extra conservative. I'm looking to lock in profits. And that's what I did today. You may be saying, yeah, you dodged a bullet, Stas. Yeah, I kind of did dodge a bullet because this dumped like crazy, but I am happy that I was able to close the day on a uh, nice swing, swing of green, guys. Green is always 
awesome. So that is it for the trading portion of the video. Let me know down below what you guys ended up doing today. Some stocks that I'm watching that I'm keeping my eyes on here into the weekend, heading over to next week, are AMD. This is one that I'm watching uh, very closely here. We pulled back aggressively to the $30 level of support today, and we see on the 184-hour chart, AMD has a strong level of support at around $30. The RSI got brought down. The 30 level was a resistance for quite some time. We broke out of it, making it a new support. So this opened up now about 13% margin of profit on AMD. This is looking very good heading into next week, guys. I would be interested in seeing, you know, if we gap up, if we hold this level of $30, we start to get up into the 31s again, that could be a good confirmation of A, the bounce on the uh, new support, and B, that would give us a good entry point because of the confirmation of the bounce. So in my opinion, AMD is looking very juicy right now. All we need to see is that pump. McDonald's is another one that a lot of people in our community have been talking about. Me personally, I traded McDonald's a couple of days ago. You guys watched that video, you know. Today, it's up to, up about $1.17 right now, up about 0.57%. This is a stock that's in a, it's in a weird place right now. A couple of things can happen here. We could either you know hit this 207 level of resistance about a dollar higher from where we are right now. We can get rejected there and slowly start to see another one of these retracements back down to that 50 SMA or we can break out of here guys but the thing is if we break out of 207 just think about how overbought McDonald's would be at that point the RSI would be something like this like you guys can see from a couple of days ago what the RSI was looking like that would be very overbought and me personally I would rather see it get rejected get back down to that 200 level test that moving average and that could open up an even juicier uh, buying point for uh, McDonald's ticker symbol MCD. I'm loving that. I'm loving it. Ooh, I'm loving it. Is that McDonald's, guys? Yeah, of course it's McDonald's. What the heck am I saying? I'm loving it, guys. So MCD McDonald's, watching that one along with AMD. Those are some, and especially McDonald's, guys. This one's been doing so good as the market's been weak. I think it would be idiotic not to watch a stock like this. Just take a look. From the beginning of the sell-off in, in May, the stock's gone from 194 to 206. Like, come on. That's like a 4% move during times of rough uh, uh, stock market markets and yeah this is more of like a six percent move so I think that's very well uh, very well worth um, keeping your eyes on so obviously I'm watching these market ETFs I talk about these every single day you know in specific the ones that go up when markets are selling off I'm thinking those are really really attractive right now SQQQ especially and uh, SPXS those two trade on the SPX and the NASDAQ they go up whenever the NASDAQ and the SPX are selling off, right? So SQQQ in particular, this goes up when the NASDAQ is selling off and the SPXS is going up whenever the S&P 500 is selling off. So those are two that I'm watching heading into this next week. Some other ones, guys, you know, JNUG, like I traded today, if gold continues this run, that's going to be very interesting. You know, crude oil's been in an interesting spot as well. Now it seems like we're having struggles breaking out of that 50 SMA resistance. This could be a spot where we might dump again, and DWT may go on another huge rally, ticker symbol DWT, right? This one goes up whenever crude oil is selling off. This could be setting up for a breakout here. So those are just a couple that I'm watching. If you guys want me to talk about a specific stock or ETF, every single Friday I ask you guys to drop a comment down below in the comment section with a ticker symbol, and I'll get to it in Sunday's video. Sunday I'm typically uploading stocks that I'm watching for that upcoming week, and I like taking requests from the subscribers, the viewers out there, the supporters of stocks they want me to talk about. So drop a comment down below, and I'll get Get to that in Sunday's video. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, feel free to go down below, hit that like button. Again, drop a comment, ticker symbol. Let me know what you guys did this week. What do you think the markets are going to do next week? And subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. I appreciate every single one of you guys watching. It means the world to me. Peace out.